All right, and I'll start with a statement and then um, kind of open it up, open it up to questions. So um, we, I know the score didn't turn out the way that we all wanted, but we were able to go out and execute a lot of situations that we talked about going into this football game. We were able, we were able to get a long field goal, all right? Didn't make it, but we were able to at least um, put it on tape. We were able to execute in a um, at the end of half, two minute situation to get a down down clock situation. So. Um, that was good. So it was good to see both quarterbacks go out there um, in two-minute situations and and execute. All right. Um, so that part was good. We got a lot of things we need to clean up. You know, you can't turn the ball over four times and expect to win the football game. So, um, you know, with that said, I'll leave it up for questions here. So Steve, if you could, I guess, talk about just how you did, how you used the quarterbacks today and how you felt both Malik and Will did. You know what? It's, I mean, it's just like a football game. It was good and bad. I mean, both of them had opportunities in two-minute situations, which was great. And and the, the truth is, this is like we're in training camp. I see these preseason games as still a part of training camp. So those guys are in training camp. But the difference is we were able to get some live situations. You know, they were able to see the um, – get a chance from a rush standpoint to really feel what it's like without the coaches telling them to stay away from the quarterback. So that, that stuff that you can't um, – that you can't uh, do in practice. So it was good to get those guys those situations. I think both of them did a good job. Both of them have a lot of things just like – um, everybody to clean up, but again, this this um, this experience is priceless for those guys. Just before halftime, Malik Wilson took over at the 17, a minute eight left, and he drove you guys in position for the field goal. How do you like the operation and the way he was able to? You know what? It's it's what you would hope to expect from a, a, a second year uh, quarterback. You know, he had some ups and downs, ups and downs last year, but he was able to. Um, you know, he's had a really good training camp, and he was able to go out and show some of that maturity. I mean, there's there's things to get better at again like all the guys but i'm i'm happy with what malik did and he you know the good thing about him is he was able to come to the sideline and the things that he needed to get better at while he was out there he was able to communicate it to timmy right away i should have did this or i got i can't hold the ball that long and that that shows growth and really that's what you hope for and expect from a second year player now Compose your attitude type stuff those last two minute drives for both of them. I've just seen both of them kind of handle the huddles. You know what? It was it was good. There wasn't you know, we didn't make some plays that we probably should have made, but there there wasn't an issue with composure at all. I think both of those guys handled it well. You know, Will had an opportunity and Malik had an opportunity. So it was good to get those situations because we practice it all the time. Now you can really teach off of it. All right. It's Live pass rush. These guys are coming like those guys were coming. And, and it was good for the offensive line to get the work. And it was really good for both of those quarterbacks to get the work. How did the series kind of predetermined or was it just going by feel as you sort of the answer? No, we, we kind of, you know, we, we talked about it going into the game a little bit yesterday, um, last night. Um, and again this morning, and we, we kind of had an idea of how we wanted to rotate those guys early on. And then really it was just a um, feel. We wanted to get certain guys with certain players, and there's so much that goes into it. You know, it's not just throwing guys out there, but we want to get certain plays called with certain players, with certain quarterbacks. So um, it's a matrix. How do you feel, how do you feel about the like throw? I felt great. I mean, I'm a football coach. I know how to lead, and that's what I was able to do. Um, I had a lot of help, a lot of help from stretch, from stretch, from stretch. All right, and Vrabes was there, and he was able to um, he was able to help. But really, honestly, we got good kid, we got good players, and we got good people here. So coaching the football team, I mean, that was the the easiest part of this thing. You got to watch the film, but it gave up eight sacks, four quarterbacks each. How much of that was maybe those guys holding on the ball too much? It's always a combination. You know, usually when you give up sacks, everybody looks at the offensive line, and I'm speaking from a defensive line coach. 
kind of protecting them, it's not always the offensive line, and it ain't the offensive line coach, all right? It's it's sometimes receivers getting open, it's sometimes tight ends missing a chip block, it's sometimes a back, it's sometimes a quarterback. Like, usually when you give up a sack, it's everybody, all right? If the quarterback holds it too long, then it's on the quarterback. If a receiver doesn't get open, then it's on the, re- the receiver. But when people look at numbers, they just say, well, it's the offensive line. And trust me, I know um, from a defensive line standpoint, you look up and without even watching a game, you see 300 yards rushing, you can immediately write down, well, the D-line didn't play well without knowing the whole story. So, you feel like Dodge Spears gave you some juice uh, maybe already running? He did. He, he ran hard. Um, he was physical. And, and I think bringing up Tajay Spears, he was in there some with that first offensive line. And when we talk about sacks, the good thing is that first offensive line group that went out there, they protected well. We were able to run the ball. That's exciting. And and we got some guys that we got to um, keep working with technique. But, I mean, that group of Brewer and, and Peter and, and Dillard and that crew, it was exciting to watch those guys go out there and block, all right? And they were able to protect and do those things. So that, that was exciting. So the eight sacks, none of them came with that crew in the game. How's the game going to end to this event when the Bears had so many of their key guys on the field for that drive? Yeah, that's that's on them. Like, we're not looking at who they have out there. Like, I, it's I, – I honestly, I couldn't tell you who the Bears had out there. I was focused on our guys and what, what they were able to do. Like, this, that's what these preseason games are. Like I said earlier, it's an extension of training camp in my mind, all right? So those that offensive line, I mean, we, we should be proud of it. We're proud of them in that room, I can tell you that, that first group. So it was exciting. And, and they've gotten better all training camp, so it was good to go see those guys go out there and execute. Defense gave up some big plays, but for the most part, scored one to four. What do you think? What you got on that side? I, I think that, like we see in every preseason game, uh, missed tackles. Like the, to start, because we don't tackle live in practice. We got great drills that we do, but there, there's just like I talked about um, simulating a real rush. It's the same with really tackling guys to the ground. Like we don't, we don't, we don't tackle in this league in practice, and rightfully so. You can't get guys hurt. So when you play these preseason games, it's important. And and again, we're able to teach off of it. Like now, guys can see the mistakes. Like we're not. I mean, again. We did exactly what we wanted to do in this football game. Trust me, from a coaching staff uh, standpoint and the players, they understand, they understood what the goal was. And the goal was not to win the football game. All right. As much as people want to make that we lost, whatever, that wasn't the goal. This is preseason. We went out there and we were able to execute and put our guys in some situations that you just can't get in practice. Decided to go for it early, fourth and one, or fourth and goal from the one. Is that gut feeling, analytics? Like, how, how did you arrive? Yeah, I honestly, I don't know about analytics, but you just, I mean, you get the ball down there, you got to figure you can get one yard. I mean, and that's, that's got to be our mindset. Um, and I know Vraves believes the same, same thing. And I said this before, we see football the same. And if, if we need a yard, Within reason, we're going to go for it. All right. If, if it's fourth and one, we'll go for it. How do you view those type of situations? Whereas, like, you know, a lot of coaches, they will use analytics as opposed to gut for you as a decision maker. How do you view it? I think you got to, I think there's a spot for everything. I mean, I'm not bashing analytics. I think it's, I think it's great, but ultimately, you know, your football team and that's something that the paper can't really tell you, you know, you, you got to have a feel for your guys and know who you have and who they're also going against. And that's something that um, analytics, while great, you still have to make those decisions, you know, so I mean, I think there, it's, a, it's a place in football for analytics. I mean, we use some analytics. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But really, ultimately, and I found this out today, it comes down to the head football coach having a feel for his football team. 
I know you, you said uh, early on that you want to focus to be on the players all the way through. It looked like Mike kind of kept his distance, let you do your thing. Maybe yeah. What was the day like as a whole from you? Just You know what? It was um, – I was prepared because I have Mike – um, and I asked him a bunch of questions leading up into this, like, hey, what do we do in this situation? What do we do? Stretch, text me, hey, T, remember this. Um, if this comes up, you know, how to handle th- – this was the easy part, the football, getting to the football game um, and actually coaching this day. That was the easy part. It's the stuff leading up to it. Make sure, okay, everybody's on time and doing all of that stuff where I'm – you know, normally I'm worried about a, a group of defensive linemen. Now I'm worried about the entire football team. But when you're put in that situation, um, that's what you do. So, I mean, the, the day went good. I think our players responded good. I loved the way we um, worked on the sideline. You know, we had some pre-snap penalties and some things that we talked about not doing. But, I mean, overall, I think the operation was, was great. Did you find yourself watching the defensive line as much as you normally do, or do you have more? No, no. I didn't, matter of fact, I didn't even position myself where I normally would stand. Normally, I stand on the line of scrimmage, but Vrabes kept reminding me, like leading up to this, was like, "Man, you gotta, you gotta position yourself behind the officials because they're coming to you." Like, there's so many different things that you don't think about as a position coach that you have to think about as a head football coach and I don't there's no experience that you can get like this I don't care where you go you can go to these different programs and all of this but there there's no experience like this experience and um, I'm thankful to Miss Amy I'm thankful thankful to Vrabes I'm thankful thankful to this organization but more importantly I'm thankful um, to these football players that went out there and battled um, battled for us. And you know what? We, as a coaching staff, we're going to go and look at the film and make the corrections and watch it with these guys, and we're going to get better. We're going to learn from it. Live up to it? Yeah, yeah. It was a great environment out there. Chicago fans came out and, and uh, our fans as well and to make it a great environment. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, obviously, we would have loved to get the win, but um, – I feel like, you know, as far as first go around at this, uh, it felt good out there. You have to watch film, but how did you like about some of the things you were able to do when, the, when your group was out there? Maybe it was some things you maybe wanted. Yeah, I mean, I think we did a pretty good job just operationally, um, getting in and out of the huddle, making sure we got the right, um, you know, ideas and looks. Um, decision-making-wise, thought I did a decent job, but, uh, you know, at the end, I had a chance to win the game and got to make a throw to, to, to win the game there. And... Um, just a shame that didn't happen, but uh, we're going to learn from it and we're going to get better. Yeah, play guys, did you get hit on that play well? Sorry? Did you get hit on that last throw? Uh, the last throw, uh, no. I was waiting for someone to come across the middle. I thought I'd, he was going to come behind him, came underneath. A little miscommunication, but had to try to put a ball in there to make something happen. But uh, would like to have it back. But the, but the play before, I thought we'd make that play. If I make that throw, we make that catch, catch and run. He's, he's out the back door. So um, disappointing, but... Uh, Excited to look at it. What was Play your, uh, what was the, your nerves like during the course of this game and the speed of the game? How did you react to that? Yeah, uh, I was a little, I mean, I'm, I was definitely nervous, but I had nerves kind of hit me a couple days ago and had an opportunity to take it or realize it and process it. And I feel like that helped me to go out there and not have as much nerves today. So it felt good. Didn't feel any different out there than I did in practice. So, I mean, I felt like that was good. It was a good sign of just being prepared. So, um, yeah. Speed of the game. Oh yeah, speed of the game. Um, I mean, we got an NFL defense back in Nashville, so I mean, I'm, I've been getting used to it there. But it, definitely, when you get into a game environment and getting hit for the first time, uh, it changes things. So um, being able to understand when I have to move or when there is pressure presence, um, these are the only types of environments where I can truly get uh, reps to get better in that way. So that was a, it was good to feel that. It was probably the first game you ever played that didn't count. I, I mean, I played some jamborees and, and youth football. You know, like, those are always fun. But uh, today's about getting better. I mean, you, did you have the examples in the games to, to learn from in this one? Example, like specific examples. Like, were the scenarios that you were presented with? You're like, man, I really got a guy to be in this play in this situation. I mean, I mentioned just the the second to last play there. I, I mean, I'm, I'm moving out of the pocket. I, I'm thrown off platform, but 
it's it's a throw that I can make, and I know I can make that throw. And um, if I put that on him, he can catch and run, and, and it's a different ball game. And I'm feeling a lot better about myself right now. So that's one. Other than that, uh, operationally, a couple good things came up just from in the run game, like understanding where we want our combinations to go to, and a uh, couple plays where I could have made it a little easier for us. So those are always good to learn from. And then, um, yeah, uh, those are definitely two, two ones that come to mind. As I play, you knew the plan coming in. I guess what's it like in one series out, just kind of alternating? What was it like you and Willie kind of support one another? Yeah, it was kind of, kind of different. I mean, it was the first time I think either of us had ever really done anything like that. So um, it was cool. I mean, it's, it's like practice. Like, you know, we, we switch off reps, so similar to that. But uh, it's just regardless of if I'm not even playing at all, I feel like, you got to be the same amount of locked in. So uh, I was I was there mentally, and then just the, the only weird part was just getting re-warmed up every so often. Was that communicated all to you guys mm-hmm. about how it would go? Yeah, we knew going into, I think, yesterday or the day before they told us. So were you counting drives heading into that last one, knowing you'd have the, ch- the chance of the two-minute drill? Was that kind of... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was hoping to get, a, get another opportunity for sure. I wanted Malik to get the job done, obviously, first, so we didn't have to worry about it. But... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was nice to get an opportunity to try to win the game down there. But got to got to do better next time. How much talking were you and Malik doing between series and such? Oh, well, we were with Coach London and Coach Kelly, just talking about everything, um, showing us the pictures. That was also my first time experiencing that. You know, with the with the surfaces, with the pictures, and being able to see what the looks were on the previous drive. So that was cool. Um, affirming or or going against what we had thought happened out there on the field. Uh, I think that's it's a cool tool that we're able to use at this level. That um, most, I think, quarterbacks don't really think about uh, until they get to the league. Did you interact much with Terrell Williams before maybe this end of this week? And, and what was it like having With who, a, sorry? With Terrell Williams. Uh, and what was it like? He, uh, uh, yeah, um, he was just very adamant about his belief in us and that, you know, we were going to go out there and go and do do our thing. And um, he, he was, just like he said, he's, he wasn't going to try to be Coach Vrabel. He, he approached this game and he approached his style of coaching like he do, like he would if he he would be in that position. So it was interesting to see uh, how he how he approached it. And I thought he did a great job from just game management standpoint and uh, throughout the week with prepping us as well. So I mean, he gave us a lot of confidence going in. Um, I think that just how we've handled ourselves throughout practice and in, in the spring and then leading up to the camp uh, showed him, even though he's on the defensive side of the ball, that. Uh, we can go and, do it, go and do this, so uh, we knew that as well. Thoughts on the pressures, just how do you feel like you did against pressures today? What do you have to grow in that area too? Good. Uh, I, I mean, I think mentally, like, that's the part of the game that obviously takes it to your game to the next level once you get to the NFL. And uh, in college, like, I had a decent understanding of it, but I feel like just in the last few, uh, few months, um, I've gotten a lot better at it, and a lot of the things that they brought – Whereas in college, I might have been like, oh, shoot, they, they brought, you know, Star Mike. Like, I actually saw it. Like, oh, Star Mike, this is my answer. I'm, I'm here. Um, so to have those reaffirm, uh, reaffirming plays, um, seeing the shell, seeing what you could possibly get from a pressure standpoint and affirming that and then reacting and doing what you need to do when that comes to mind, uh, it's what you got to do with this league. And I feel like I did a decent job of that. Thanks, guys. Malik, a lot of talk from you about, you know, wanting to uh, develop and your confidence feeling like you had grown from last year to this year. You looked a lot better. Did you feel a lot better? Yeah, I definitely felt better. Uh, it was just trying to go out there and execute whatever was called uh, to the best of my ability, make sure we ended in and out of the huddle. Uh, we had a delayed game there early uh, after that review to see if we uh, they had got Chris down before the fumble. But, uh, yeah, I just got to make sure staying on top of things, knowing that the ball is going to start on the ready and understanding cadence and making sure that all the guys are communicating and all these different types of things. You had the touchdown on the opening drive, and then you led the two-minute drill for the field goal at the end of the first half. How do you like the way you were able to execute on those drives? Uh, I think it's just awesome when you can do something in practice and, you know, consistently rep stuff, and, and, and you get the opportunity in the game, and you take advantage of it. So that's just awesome, and kudos to those guys that were out there with me uh, help us get down there because we messed up on the first one. Uh, then we got another opportunity, and we went out there, and we stuffed it in, and we, we got a down-down clock, and we got to kick a field goal. Really excited about the offensive line on that first drive. They they gave you an opportunity to make plays. Yeah, the first yeah the first team offensive line on that first drive was awesome. Uh, they did a great job giving me protection, a great job creating holes for uh, Tajay and those those guys running the ball. And uh, we got down the field, what twelve plays, thirteen plays. That was a great job. Feel like the game just kind of slowed down for you a little bit. This is your first 
live action against an opponent this year? Is, did, it, did it feel slower than what you saw last year? Uh, it definitely feels different than last year. Uh, last year was my first time seeing all this stuff, and now uh, after a whole year seeing all the different types across the league and understanding what we're trying to do on offense now and uh, just what we're expecting from each play, I think it's been awesome to get out there and go do some real life stuff. <laughs> Like Malika, you knew the plan coming in, just all kind of alternating series with Will, trying to stay in a rhythm, and, and you guys kind of support each other through it. Just controlling what you can control uh, more than anything. Uh, but it was cool. So making sure each other, we telling each other what we see off the field, and next person goes, whatever, whoever he calls. How did you like the way the communication between yourself and Tim Kelly, Coach London, and even uh, Will Levis went throughout the game? I think it went good. I mean, it was the same as it was last year. That dynamic doesn't really change no matter who's in and who's out or uh, what type of game it is. So uh, it was awesome. Coach London said he likes to have the QB room be competitive but not combative. How have you been able to contribute to that? Be myself. I mean, it's not like I'm out here hating on folks. So <laughs> I'm just going to try to get better. Focus on that. That last game, I know, I know competitive instinct kicks in. It's a preseason game. You're not actually trying. Winning's not the main objective. But how much did you want that touchdown there? Just how close do you feel like you guys got? Winning is the objective every time you step on the field, but definitely going out there and try to execute the best of our ability, that's what we were focused on. But, yeah, definitely wanted it. You know, uh, maybe if I threw the one to Mason a little bit lower, I was trying to get over two backers. But, yeah, you want to end the game with a tug. You want to go out there and win it. But that's the way the game goes. Yeah, we're going. Appreciate it.